I'm Sky Bergman, and uh, I'm here at Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo. Well, I'm Robbie Canal, and people know me as a guerrilla poster artist. I'm Margaret Corey Shelley. I'm a sculptor, and I teach art at Cuesta College. Yeah, well, San Luis Obispo is like the perfect place. Um, the weather's beautiful all the time, which for me, I actually, the same guy, um, Lou Marcus was his name, who was teaching where I went to undergrad and um, kind of helped shepherd me into a master's program. One of the best pieces of advice that he gave me was live, apply to grad schools in places that you want to live. Um, because for me, that environment and waking up every morning and seeing the sun and being close to the beach um, is really wonderful. And then the other thing that I think is great is I grew up in a big city. I grew up in Philadelphia, but I love living in a small town where I can walk downtown and I know a lot of people. And um, I just, I love that, again, that sense of community. That is a repetitive sort of theme in terms of my work and where I've chosen to live and, and being in the university environment. I'm very excited to be living in Los Osos, Baywood Park. Um, it's the water. This is a spot on the central coast, um, exactly equidistant from San Francisco and Los Angeles. And there are three bodies of water right three blocks away from us. There's the biggest pool of water in the world, very inspiring, the Pacific Ocean. There's a uh, Dune Strip, and then there's Morro Bay, which is a little more protected, 45 harbor seals, um, pelicans, egrets, uh, great blue herons, thousands of uh, curlews, kayaks, and very old people. No, uh, <laughs> and then there's an estuary, um, which is kind of like the transition between the two. And uh, they're all wonderful, they're all different, and I have access to all of them and it makes me very happy. I love being on the water, silent, with the creatures. Um, without water we wouldn't be here. Um, I mean, you could say that about the sun. It's a little farther away than the water. Um, I, lo I love the uh, quiet here. I'm a city boy. In fact, when I moved here, most of my friends just couldn't believe it. Like, what? Aren't you like a concrete and broken glass kind of guy? I say, yeah, but you don't know me that well. Uh, I, I am that. I'm street, but I'm also ocean, bay, and estuary. I love the beauty of this area. I don't think I'm necessarily, I don't, you know, it's not like I'm a landscape painter, so I'm directly influenced by the area. I think it's just more connections with friends. Um, I took a photography class for fun my very last semester in college and I fell in love with it and I went to my photo teacher and I said I want your job how do I do that because I like being in the academic environment and uh, I've been teaching at Cal Poly for 20 years so it's it's been a real pleasure I'm very lucky I didn't didn't shoot how food. it happened how did it happen I got really really angry and I wasn't going to take it anymore. See, that wasn't me. That was that street artist guy. I couldn't not be an artist. I tried to several times because I, as much as I loved making art, it didn't seem like much of a career. Mm. And so I studied psychology for a while, tried some other things, and just kept in, ending up back in the studio. I really just enjoyed being in the academic environment. I enjoyed learning. As my mom said, that I have the perfect profession because I'm a professional student. If you can get a job teaching at the university level, is a reasonable source of income. But also, I love kids. You know, young people. I'm very old, but I'm very immature. I have compassion for people who actually 
are trying to learn it. <laughs> and I know, you know, I remember very well uh, how important mentors were to me. And without them, you know, I would probably wouldn't be here at all. You know, which some people think is a good thing, but personally, I like it here. I felt that when I really got to the point where I was feeling more comfortable with myself as an artist, I loved making things, but being in the studio often, you know, all day by myself, I just felt sort of disconnected. And so I started teaching part-time, immediately just loved teaching, and then also just loved my colleagues, loved working with them as well, and never regret it. My ideal working environment, um, I really love to work with people. So that's why I'm doing the project that I'm doing. I'm interviewing other people. And um, so I think it has to be all about a sense of community. That's my real ideal work environment. Even here at the university, um, I have wonderful people that I work with that support what I do. Kurt Brown, who's a photo lab technician, I can't imagine working here without him. And so I think my ideal work environment really depends on the people that I'm working with. Even in the project that I'm working on, the other people that are part of it that I'm working with, I have to really get along with them. They have to be good at what they do, but I have to really like them. And I think that that makes a big uh, difference for me. I like, you know, the music blasting, uh, the TV on a ball game. And getting jiggy with it. You know, I can work anywhere where there's tools in the studio. I just have to have time. That's the, for me the most precious um, resource. Well, I think through, uh, through the Lives Well Lived project, I hope that people have a better understanding of what aging can be and that we start looking toward our elders as role models and as people that we really should listen to and talk to and learn from. Um, in terms of teaching, uh, I think you know, my greatest joy is when I have alum that come back or that email me and tell me what they're doing and I know that I had a little tiny part in that. And, and so I kind of feel like a proud parent when that happens. To get my images and little jokes um, distributed, you know, to a large enough uh, section of the population so that um, people will like to tickle people into thinking along with me about issues that I think are important. I feel like every, you know, month, every year that I keep creating art, I'm, for me, that's success as an artist. I'm not at a point of my life where I'm trying to show, you know, make a name for myself, anything like that. But it keeps me connected to teaching, kind of more connected to my inner life. Um, so I think more of my goals now are just for the, program on Equesta College of more long-term bigger goals. Uh, I shoot a lot, shoot a lot of images. Um, you're using digital, so it's basically free. And um, the hardest part now, I think, with digital photography is becoming a really good editor. So knowing how to edit your work and doing the best that you can in terms of um, really looking and finding the best images that you shot that actually say something, that, that means something. One of the big problems with young artists is trying to cram too much into one work of art. And one of the problems associated with that is never finishing. So my advice is start with something modest, one idea that is within your resources of the moment, which includes your budget, how much your parents will give you or not give you, um, you know, how much time you have, what access to materials you have, consider all that, make a piece of art, get it done, then go do another one. And good luck with that. <laughs> to not be afraid, basically. And find other artists that you like, work with people, talk to people, put yourself in that kind of situation.
my biggest challenge has been not having enough hours in the day. I have so many ideas, so much that I want to do, and um, sometimes it's hard to, hard to get all of that done in a 24-hour period. <laughs> I probably sleep less than most people because I just have so much that I want to do with my life and so much that I want to get out there. And so I would say that's really my biggest challenge. In, in our culture, um, there's kind of a prejudice in high art when you think about what is high art against art that addresses social or political issues. It, it's because it immediately gets tagged as propaganda. So, and I understand that. Um, I don't like it, but I understand. I don't know, I think the challenge is to feel like you're relevant, that you're not rehashing somebody else's ideas, and that what you're to do has meaning. You know, I'm really lucky in that I don't feel like I have any regrets or unfulfilled wishes. I have lived my life um, always doing what I felt in my heart that I needed to do, and I think that's a good way to live because I don't look back with any regrets. I have many regrets and many unfulfilled wishes in, in every way. I'm also as happy as I've ever been. You know, I regret not being nicer to some people and not being less nice to some others. Um, I never got to meet a tiger. I'd like that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What do I look forward to? I look forward to uh, living a really good life as I have for the past 49 years and seeing that, you know, just what happens in the next maybe hopefully 49 years. And um, in the short term, I look forward to seeing what happens with the film and where that goes and how many people that it touches. It's really more important to me how many lives it touches. And so uh, having had the first screening this past Sunday and seeing the reaction that um, really will keep me going because that was just, it was such a positive experience. So I'm looking forward to seeing where that takes me. And I look forward to the next minute, the next hour, the next day, the next week. I look forward to the future and that there, be, there being one. <laughs> it's my most fervent hope that the future is now. Well, I pretty much look forward to every day, so that part I like. But I look forward to being retired at some time. I don't want to. I love what I'm doing now, but to really focus more on art. Thank mm -hmm. you.